Chapter 2. The Other Union Institutions and Advisory Bodies Article I-30. The European Central Bank 1. The European Central Bank, together with the national central banks, shall constitute the European system of central banks. The European Central Bank, together with the national central banks of the member states, whose currency is the euro, which constitute the euro system, shall conduct the monetary policy of the Union. 2. The European system of central banks shall be governed by the decision-making bodies of the European Central Bank. The primary objective of the European system of central banks shall be to maintain price stability. Without prejudice to that objective, it shall support the general economic policies in the Union in order to contribute to the achievement of the latter's objectives. It shall conduct other central bank tasks in accordance with Part 3 and the statute of the European system of central banks and of the European Central Bank. 3. The European Central Bank is an institution. It shall have legal personality. It alone may authorize the issue of the euro. It shall be independent in the exercise of its powers and in the management of its finances, union institutions, bodies, offices and agencies, and the governments of the member states shall respect that independence. 4. The European Central Bank shall adopt such measures as are necessary to carry out its tasks in accordance with Articles 3185 to 3191 and Article 3196 and with the conditions laid down in the statute of the European System of Central Banks and of the European Central Bank. In accordance with these same articles, those member states, whose currency is not the euro, and their central banks, shall retain their powers in monetary matters. 5. Within the areas, falling within its responsibilities, the European Central Bank shall be consulted on all proposed union acts, and all proposals for regulation at national level, and may give an opinion. 6. The decision-making organs of the European Central Bank, their composition, and operating methods, are set out in Articles 3 382, and 3 383, as well as in the statute of the European System of Central Banks, and of the European Central Bank. Article I-31. The Court of Auditors 1. The Court of Auditors is an institution. It shall carry out the Union's audit. 2. It shall examine the accounts of all Union revenue and expenditure, and shall ensure good financial management. 32 Part I-3. It shall consist of one national of each member state. Its members shall be completely independent in the performance of their duties in the Union's general interest. Article I-32. The Union's advisory bodies 1. The European Parliament, the Council, and the Commission, shall be assisted by a committee of the regions, and an economic and social committee, exercising advisory functions. 2. The Committee of the Regions, shall consist of representatives of regional and local bodies, who either hold a regional or local authority electoral mandate, or are politically accountable to an elected assembly. 3. The Economic and Social Committee shall consist of representatives of organizations of employers, of the employed, and of other parties representative of civil society, notably in socio-economic, civic, professional and cultural areas. 4. The members of the Committee of the Regions and the Economic and Social Committee shall not be bound by any mandatory instructions. They shall be completely independent in the performance of their duties in the Union's general interest. 5. Rules governing the composition of these committees, the designation of their members, their powers, and their operations, are set out in Articles 3 386 to 3 392. The rules referred to in paragraphs 2 and 3 governing the nature of their composition shall be reviewed at regular intervals by the Council to take account of economic, social and demographic developments within the Union. The Council, on a proposal from the Commission, shall adopt European decisions to that end. Title V Exercise of Union Competence Chapter I Common Provisions Article I-33. The Legal Acts of the Union 1. To exercise the Union's competences the institutions shall use as legal instruments, in accordance with Part 3, European laws, European framework laws, European regulations, European decisions, recommendations and opinions. Treaty establishing a constitution for Europe 33 of European law shall be a legislative act of general application. It shall be binding in its entirety, and directly applicable in all member states. A European framework law shall be a legislative act binding, as to the result to be, achieved, upon each member state to which it is addressed, but shall leave to the national authorities the choice of form, and methods. A European regulation, shall be a non-legislative act of general application for the implementation of legislative acts, and of certain provisions of the Constitution. It may, either be binding in its entirety, and directly applicable in all member states, or be binding, as to the result to be, achieved, upon each member state to which it is addressed, but shall leave to the national authorities the choice of form, and methods. A European decision shall be a non-legislative act, binding in its entirety. A decision, which specifies those to whom it is addressed, shall be binding only on them. Recommendations and opinions shall have no binding force. 2. When considering draft legislative acts, the European Parliament, and the Council, shall refrain from adopting acts, not provided for by the relevant legislative procedure in the area in question. Article I-34. Legislative Acts. 
1. European laws and framework laws shall be adopted on the basis of proposals from the Commission, jointly by the European Parliament and the Council under the ordinary legislative procedure as set out in Article 3 396. If the two institutions cannot reach agreement on an act, it shall not be adopted. 2. In the specific cases provided for in the Constitution, European laws and framework laws shall be adopted by the European Parliament with the participation of the Council, or by the latter with the participation of the European Parliament, in accordance with special legislative procedures. 3. In the specific cases provided for in the Constitution, European laws and framework laws may be adopted at the initiative of a group of member states, or of the European Parliament, on a recommendation from the European Central Bank, or at the request of the Court of Justice, or the European Investment Bank. Article I-35. Non-Legislative Acts. 1. The European Council shall adopt European decisions in the cases provided for in the Constitution. 2. The Council, and the Commission, in particular in the cases referred to in Articles I-36, and I-37, and the European Central Bank in the specific cases provided for in the Constitution, shall adopt European regulations, and decisions. 34. Part I-3. The Council shall adopt recommendations. It shall act on a proposal from the Commission in all cases, where the Constitution provides that it shall adopt acts on a proposal from the Commission. It shall act unanimously in those areas in which unanimity is required for the adoption of a Union Act. The Commission, and the European Central Bank in the specific cases provided for in the Constitution, shall adopt recommendations. Article I-36. Delegated European Regulations. 1. European laws and framework laws may delegate to the Commission the power to adopt delegated European regulations to supplement or amend certain non-essential elements of the law or framework law. The objectives, content, scope and duration of the delegation of power shall be explicitly defined in the European laws and framework laws. The essential elements of an area shall be reserved for the European law or framework law and accordingly shall not be the subject of a delegation of power. 2. European laws and framework laws shall explicitly lay down the conditions to which the delegation is subject. These conditions may be as follows. A. The European Parliament, or the Council may decide to revoke the delegation. B. The delegated European regulation may enter into force, only, if no objection, has been expressed by the European Parliament, or the Council within a period set by the European law, or framework law. For the purposes of A. And B. The European Parliament shall act by a majority of its component members, and the Council by a qualified majority. Article I-37. Implementing Acts. 1. Member States shall adopt all measures of national law necessary to implement legally, binding Union Acts. 2. Where uniform conditions for implementing legally, binding Union Acts are needed, those Acts shall confer implementing powers on the Commission, or, in duly justified specific cases, and in the cases provided for in Article I-40, on the Council. 3. For the purposes of Paragraph 2, European laws shall lay down in advance the rules, and general principles, concerning mechanisms for control by member states of the Commission's exercise of implementing powers. 4. Union implementing acts shall take the form of European implementing regulations, or European implementing decisions. Treaty establishing a constitution for Europe 35 Article I-38. Principles common to the Union's legal acts 1. Where the constitution does not specify the type of act to be adopted, the institutions shall select it on a case-by-case -case basis, in compliance with the applicable procedures, and with the principle of proportionality referred to in Article I-11. 2. Legal acts shall state the reasons on which they are based, and shall refer to any proposals, initiatives, recommendations, requests or opinions required by the Constitution. Article I-39. Publication and entry into force 1. European laws and framework laws adopted under the ordinary legislative procedure shall be signed by the President of the European Parliament and by the President of the Council. In other cases, they shall be signed by the President of the Institution, which adopted them. European laws and framework laws shall be published in the official journal of the European Union, and shall enter into force on the date specified in them, or, in the absence thereof, on the 20th day, following their publication. 2. European regulations and European decisions, which do not specify to whom they are addressed, shall be signed by the President of the Institution, which adopted them. European regulations and European decisions when the latter do not specify to whom they are addressed, shall be published in the official journal of the European Union, and shall enter into force on the date specified in them, or, in the absence thereof, on the twentieth day, following that of their publication. 3. European decisions other than those referred to in paragraph 2, shall be notified to those to whom they are addressed, and shall take effect upon such notification, 